amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, um, one other announcement I just want to make. Anybody that's interested in being part of our praise team, we, uh, if you can sing or we're looking for a guitar player for sure that can sing even better, we meet on Monday night, 7 o'clock right here, and go see Carla. Carla, raise your hand. That, the, one, uh, the one that was up here singing, that would be her. Amen. So if you can sing, we need you. Amen. We need you to get up here and help us to lead people in worship. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Revelation, to the book of Revelation, book of Revelation. I tell you, God's really been speaking to me out of the book of Revelation. How many of you know that, that the Bible, the Revelation is the only book that really is said, the Bible actually says that there is a reward to those that study Revelation. Did y'all know that? There is a reward. So, so it's important that you, you learn. And so God has been speaking to me like almost like probably three of the last five or six messages I've been preaching have been out of the book of Revelation. And God does that sometimes. I remember I, I was meeting with somebody and they told me, they said, they, and it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all, but it was funny. It would crack me up because they said they were trying to use it as a as a cut down. But and then I told the person who actually said it, and they're like, "No, that's not. Well, I wasn't saying that bad. I was just saying it was interesting how you always said." They were saying that a lot of my messages had come out of, of the books of First Kings or Second Kings, I believe. And they were like, "Yeah, and all your mess." I'm like, "But sometimes God speaks to us from a certain book, right? So we got to go, and God begins to show you new things from that book, and then He'll move me on to something else." Amen. So this is from Revelation. The message today is from Revelation. Revelation two. And when you're there, please stand with a reading and reverence of God's word if you are able to. Reverate, reveration. Revelation 2, 8 through 11. I'm reading from the, not the Queen James Bible, but the New King James Bible. <laughs> You'd have to have been here sat, son, for Pastor Nick to know what I'm talking about. But the King James Version, New King James, Revelation 2, 11 through 8 through 11. And it says this, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna I write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. And I know your works... And I know your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of the synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. That you may be tested and you will, and you may be tested and you will have tribulation. Now remember this, this is a really important, okay? This is a really important verse. Do not fear any of those things which, if, if, which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation for what? For 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Amen, amen. Preach in a few minutes a message titled, it's almost over. It's almost over. It's almost over. Amen. Turn with your neighbor and say, it's almost over. It's almost over. But not church. We just started. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's almost over. When you've been walking with God for a while, it becomes very evident and becomes very clear that God takes care of his children. Amen. How many of you received that? How many of you know that? When you walk with God for long enough, you come to the realization and you come to the fact to understand that God will take care of his children. One of the benefits to walking with God is that he always has a plan to bring his children out. Amen? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with. Now listen, I'm not getting up and preaching some fruity message telling you you're never going to go through anything. Okay, y'all hear me say that. You never, yo, when you get saved, it will be rose petals and butterflies and rainbow and beautiful gardens your whole life. No, when you get saved, the devil's going to attack you. You're, you're going to try to attack your children. He's going to try to attack your finances. He's going to try to attack your marriage. He's going to try to attack your job. That's just how the devil is because he knows that if I can get them, get them discouraged and get them off of base of where they're supposed to go, I can stop them from getting to the blessings that God has planned and ordained for their life. So you have to know this and you have to understand that even though the enemy is always attacking and the enemy always tries to come in and destroy, he never, God never gives up on his children. He always has a plan to bring you up and bring you out. He never just brings us out, but he always brings us out better than before. Oh my gosh. He never just brings you out. He never just takes you out because here's why. God is not a God of division and multiplication. I mean, division and subtraction. God is a God of addition and multiplying to your life. So he doesn't want you to just do what was okay for back then and how you barely got by. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about in peace. I'm talking about in relationships. I'm talking about in joy. I'm talking about in favor. I'm talking about with your children. I'm talking about in every area of your life. God is wanting more for you. Amen. So God doesn't just make you go through the seasons that you go through and go 
through the valleys and all of a sudden when you come out oh well I, I'm not as good as I used to be but no God is saying I'm going to take you to a better place I'm going to take you to something that's more than before does anybody hear what I'm saying today regardless of what you've been going through regardless of what you go through or even regardless of what you're, 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 you're dealing with, your experience in life, you have to know that God has a plan. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you experience in life, no matter the struggles that come your way, you've got to make up in your mind before we leave this place by 6 o'clock tonight. I'm just kidding. <laughs> before we leave this place, you've got to make up your mind tonight and today in this place. I am declaring over my life that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I have to face today, God has a plan for my life. He has a special place for the people who are in covenant with him. God has a special place for the people that are in covenant with him. Two of the most important things Christians can do are this. Number one, write this down. Two of the most important things Christians can do are this. Number one, number one, to know who God is. One of the most important things that a Christian can do is to know who God is truly is. Do y'all hear me today? I'm not talking about what you read or what you learned in a class or what you even hear at church. I'm not talking about what somebody, what mama preached to you or what grandma preached to you or what somebody told you. I'm talking about a relationship with God based on experience of what you've gone through. Based on experience that, yeah, I've gone through some hell. Yeah, I've gone through some things, but still God has brought me through. Yeah, I've gone through some troubles, and I've gone through some tribulations, and I've gone through some, some situations in my life, but still God brought me through today. You've got to know that you've gone through everything and that God has brought you out. You've gone through enough that now it becomes a personal relationship with God. Now it becomes a personal relationship with God. Do you hear me today? And you can declare emphatically and you can declare uh, strongly over your life and you will just begin to, to, to even speak over your life that I know who God is in my life. I know who God is for myself. Not what grandmom told me, not what my stepdad told me, not what my stepmom told me, not what my aunt told me, not what my pastor told me, not what so-and-so told me. I know who God is because I know what he did for me. I know how he brought me out. I know how I used to hang out with the wrong crowd, but God brought me out of that crowd. I know how I used to barely get by, but now God has made it that I am an overcomer and I'm victorious in the name of Jesus. I know what the sickness was in my body and what the doctor said I was going to have but I know how God has brought me out you have to know for yourself who God is for yourself do you hear me today and number two write this down you have to know who you are you got to know first of all who God is but second of all, you got to begin to know who you truly are when you recognize who God is then you declare that I'm a child of God right when I recognize who God is, I declare over my life, I am a child of God, and therefore I am God's responsibility, right? And I am, because I'm his responsibility, and because I'm a child of God, I will declare that no matter what happens in my life, no matter what situations come up in my life, no matter who comes against me in my life, no matter who stays with me or who leaves me in my life, I won't be rattled by it because he's always has my back, amen? He always has my back. It's like your children. You can be so mad at them five minutes ago but you're still taking the Baskin Robbins to get an ice cream. <laughs> you can be so, I'm so mad at you. I'm not going to do it. I was, so, I was so upset with Truett on Friday night. Jesus, help me. I was so upset with him. That, that's, that's my baby right there, I'm telling you. That's my, my Paul, my thorn in my side. No, I'm just kidding. That, 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 that's my love. I love him. He loves me so much. But, but I was so mad at him Friday night because me and I were going out on a on, on date celebrating Valentine's. We've been so busy we haven't been able to, so we know Valentine's wasn't really Friday, people, okay? Our, uh, but, but, fr but Friday night, we were going out, and, and so we were, we were celebrating, and, and we, we, we were going, and, and everybody was staying with a, with a babysitter, but Truett just wanted to argue and say, no, I'm going to Aunt April's. I'm going to Aunt April's. I'm going to Aunt April's. And I was so mad at him, but I knew I had to go. I knew I had to go, and I was so frustrated with him. And I, I was like, Truett, just be quiet. I'm just being honest. Okay, y'all never done that to y'all's kids, right? So y'all are the, y baby, be quiet, hon. Y'all are the loving people. But, you know, sometimes we get upset. But I was so upset with him. But then when I got back on Saturday morning, I was so happy to see him. I wanted to take him and just hug him and just love on him and just, and just take him to do something special because I love him because he's my child 
It's the same thing with God. No matter what you've done in your life, no matter how you've messed up, no matter the bad decisions and the wreck you've made of your life, now you've got to start understanding you made a wreck of your life. Stop blaming on everybody else. Oh, so-and-so did this. And no, you made the one that's made a wreck of your life at certain times. But no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you've done, God still loves you. Amen. God still cares about you. And because I'm a child of God, I have to begin to declare that no matter what happens in my life, I won't be rattled by it because I know God's always on my side. I know God always has my back. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be nervous. I'm not popping pills. I'm not trying to drink away my sorrows and drink away my worries. I'm not trying to smoke this to get my mind uh, right. I'm not doing all that because I know that I am a child of God. And if my daddy hears me cry, he will come to my rescue. If my daddy sees that I need him, if my my father knows that I need him, he's going to come and he's going to come and he's going to show up in my life because God never will disappoint you. God will always be there for you. He will stick closer to you than a brother. The question I want to deal with from this text today is this. Is there really a payoff for those of us who experience severe attacks in our life? Is there really a payoff for those of us all of us, because we all have experienced severe attacks in our life. Amen. But is there really an atta- really a payoff for those of us who experience attacks in our life? What is it that we get when we go through these things that we go through that sometimes seem so unfair, that sometimes we just don't understand? Is serving the Lord really going to pay off after a while? Is serving the Lord really going to pay off in my life? And my word for you today that walked into this place is simply this. Keep on serving. Keep on praying. Keep on being faithful. Keep on being planted. Keep on giving. Keep on doing what God has called you to do. Because the word of God for each of us today is he is about to make things right in your life. Amen. He is about to straighten up things that's been a mess up in your life. God is about to make things right in your life. I don't care what it looks like right now. God is about to make things right in your life. Can I get an amen in here? This is a participatory service. I need your participation. Amen. No, but seriously, God's about to make it right in your life. He is speaking and saying, I'm about to make up for for the lost time. I'm about to do something great in your life. You just got to hold on. The church at Smyrna in Revelation 2 is the second church which John the the revelatory sees. And he sees it and he begins to record what God told him to record. And today, I don't have time to go into this, but Smyrna is actually Izmir, Turkey. That's what it is. How many of you know all the stuff going on in the Middle East? Turkey is actually where the church of Smyrna was. And this second message of the church of Smyrna was a message where he commends them on their perseverance, even in the middle of troubles. How many of you know that can say truly, I've persevered even in the middle of troubles? I've kept on going even when all hell was breaking loose in my life. I've kept on going. I've persevered through thick and through thin in my life. And in this same letter, John suggests that he wants them to know that he is aware of their poverty. He's aware of what they're dealing with, but yet you're still rich. <laughs> I'm aware of what you're, how, how broke you are, but you're still rich. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> but he says, he, says, he says, I'm aware of what you're going through because there, he's saying, You're not rich necessarily in material things, but you're rich in love. You're rich in your peace. You're rich in relationships. You're rich in all of these areas, meaning that even though they may not not have physical possessions at at their hand, you are wealthy in your knowledge and you're wealthy in your foundation and your relationship with God. How many of you know that it's important to be wealthy in your foundation with God? It's important to be wealthy in your knowledge of God. It's because he's the only one that can help you out of the messes. He's the only one that can help you out of the struggles. He's the only one that can help you overcome what you're uh, what you're facing today. And so you got to know who you are in God and you got to know who God is for you. You got to begin to know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No matter what I'm dealing with today, no matter who is breaking stupid around me, I am. I'm going to stay faithful and I'm going to say, God, I know that you're working this out for my good. You are wealthy, wealthy in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It really doesn't matter how wealthy we are or how wealthy you're not. The fact is that if you have a relationship with God, it will keep you no matter what's going on in your life. 
It doesn't matter how much money you have and how many material things you have. The fact is that if you have a relationship with God and you will stay faithful to God and you will stay uh, 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 with, with God through thick and thin and keep by him close to them, stick to you closer than a brother, I'm telling you there will come a day when the struggles won't be so real. There will come a day when you'll look back and you'll say, oh my God, look how far we've come because God is going to bless you. But he wants to see, is he going to stay faithful? Is he going to stay faithful in the little so that I can give them much but you got to make up your mind this day that no matter the struggle no matter what I face no matter the hell I'm going through in my life I'm going to keep on giving God praise even in the midst of this I'm not going to let my di- my situation determine my praise I'm going to let my praise determine my situation I'm going to begin to say, God, I know you're going to come through. God, I know you're going to show up in the middle of this. There are a lot of people who have a lot of money, but if they lose it, they will lose their minds. There are a lot of people that have a lot of money, but if they lose their money, they will lose their minds. But if you have a relationship with God, then you know that the same God that gave it to you the first time is the same God who can turn right back around and give it to you again. Do you hear me today? When you have a relationship with God, you know maybe I lost some things, but I know that if I stay faithful, the same person, the same God who blessed me the first time with that house, the same God that blessed me the first time with that vehicle, the same God that blessed me the first time with that relationship, the same God that blessed me the first time with that, with that job is the same God that can bless Bless me again. I just got to keep on praising. I got to keep on worshiping. I got to keep on giving him glory through thick and through thin. Does anybody hear me today? John also says, and he sees the, those that call themselves Jews, but they really aren't. He says, I, I see those that, that call themselves Jews, but they're nothing but liars. And they are those that have identity problems. And they're trying to fit in and pretend like they're with them and they're really not. Hmm. How many of you know people like that? <laughs> I've seen people who come in, worship their, w- with their hands and praise God on Sunday. And by Sunday night, they're out at the club, partying, getting wasted, and don't remember what happened. They're speaking out of one side of their mouth, but they're living out of another way. And it's the same thing here. You know what the greatest, the greatest crisis or the greatest um, uh, restraint to Christianity is it's people that confess God with their mouth but deny him with their actions again I'm not getting up here saying you got to be perfect ain't none of us perfect y'all in for a perfect pastor y'all came to the wrong church go down to another church okay I'm not perfect but I love God with everything in me but we cannot speak out of one side of our mouth confession that we love God and go live like hell every other day except Sunday we got to be consistent in our worship, consistent in our praise. When good things are happening, praise God. When bad things are happening, praise God. When nothing's happening, praise God. When this one's turning against you, praise God. When new people are coming in, praise God. When whatever, they're doing this and doing that, praise God. you got to praise God through everything that you go through. Do you all hear me today? And John calls these people, these people that were pretending to be Jews, he calls the syn- them the synagogue of Satan. What a strong word. <laughs> he says they are the synagogue of Satan. And they are deceivers. And they are trying to manipulate and make you believe that they are with you, but they're really not. But John says, what I want you to do is even in all the tribulations and even in all the troubles is to keep being you, is to keep doing you, and don't allow any of what you're experiencing to change you. Do you hear me? No matter what you're facing in your life, you got to keep being you. you got to keep praising God. No matter if all hell is breaking loose and people are telling you, why do you still worship God? Why are you still doing you got to keep being you because they don't control your blessing. They don't control when God says it's your time. They don't control when it's your season. God can and you can't start listening to every hater and every naysayer and every backbiter and everyone saying, oh, you need to act like this and do that. You better open up your, your ears and shut your mouth and listen to what God is speaking of your life and declare God is the only one that can turn this around for me. Do y'all hear me today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, don't let them change you because I want you to know I see what's happening in your life and I'm going to make it right. Hallelujah. This is not just a message today. 
This is a prophetic word today. I'm speaking over your life. God is seeing your situation. And he's saying, I'm about to make things right in your life. Don't you let those people get next to you. Don't you let those situations change you. Don't you let those people silence your voice. Don't you let those people dictate what you're going to speak out of your mouth and how you're going to tell of God's goodness and tell of God's mercy. Don't let them quiet you. God says, I got you, and I'm going to show you that at the end, there is the thing that I'm about to turn around for your favor, that even though people have talked about you, even though people have left you, even though people have done you wrong, I am declaring over your life this very day that God is about to take that very thing with the enemy meant for your evil, and he's about to turn it around for your good, and favor is about to come to you. I'm about to tell you today. Carla texted me last night. She said, we got to change the name of the church to grace and favor christian center i like that we are walking in favor in our life favor is about to pour out on your life let me tell you something there is a blessing a favor that is connected to where you're at and if you look around over the past month you will see blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing on this church now is not the time to walk away now is the time to come in and bring more in because we are about to go from one level to another level do you hear me today He says, I know your works, and I know your tribulation. I want you to know today that God is aware of your situation. Do y'all hear me? God is aware of, you don't have to tell him. God knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. Whatever you're going through, God knows all about it. He isn't naive and sitting on the edge of the side of the bed and wonder, hmm, wonder what they're going to do today. Hmm, looking down at heaven going, hmm, wonder what she's going to do. No, God's not naive. He knows exactly what's going on in your life. He knows exactly what's happening in your life. He knows exactly what you're going through in your life. He is aware of every issue in your life right now. He is saying, I'm aware of every plot. I'm aware of every scheme of the enemy, and I want you to understand that I just need you to do this one thing. Say, what's that one thing? I just need you to do this one thing. God's speaking and saying, I just need you to do one thing. I'm, I'm aware, Carla. I'm aware, 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 Larice. I'm aware, Summer. I know what's going on. I know what's going on, Serena. Chantel, I know what's happening in your life. Daryl, I know. I know, but I need you, TJ, to do this one thing. Terry, I need you to do this one thing. There's just one thing, Clemente, that God is speaking. He's saying, I need you to do this. I know what you're going through, but I need you to do this one thing. I need you to keep doing good even in a bad situation. That's good, Pastor Ron. That's good. That's good. That's good. I need you to keep doing good even in a bad situation. What does that mean? When your funds are messed up, you begin to lift your voice up. When your situation is jacked up, you begin to praise God. When your situation brings you to your knees, you're in the perfect position to begin to praise God. Do you hear me today? You're in the perfect position to begin to pray. I am telling you today, God is speaking over this house and he's speaking in this place and he's saying, I need you to keep doing good even in a bad situation. He says, I know your perseverance. Pastor Ron, I know how you're getting your preach. I know how you're trying to give everything you got to your people. I know what you're trying to do and I know how you've endured and you've, you, you, you've covered people and you've kept people and I know what you've done and I'm telling you, Pastor Ron, I'm preaching to myself right now. I need to sit down. I, I'm telling you that you have endured and if you'll keep on going, the breakthrough is on its way. The church is about to explode things are about to happen he's speaking it over your life today and he's saying if you will just endure through the bad and praise me and lift me up do good to people who hurt you do good to people who harm you do good to people who treat you bad do people good to people who walk away from you do good to people that talk about you if you will love them and show them the love of christ i am about to do something great in your life hallelujah (laughs) hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word is this. Keep doing what is pleasing to God. Even when there are demonic plans, demonic schemes, trying to work against you and to undermine your destiny. So y'all don't even know. Some of you don't even know. It ain't your boss acting stupid. It ain't, it, 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 it isn't your relationship. It, it's nothing more than demonic activity that's happening in your life. And churches don't want to talk about this. We want to come in and get a a good hour service and go home and act like we've done stuff. 
But I'm telling you, if you want to grow in God and you want to go in God, you're going to have to understand that there's, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. And it's not always so-and-so's acting silly and so-and-so's breaking stupid and so-and-so's doing this. No, sometimes it's demonic activity that has come. How many of you know that the devil, even, even sometimes Christians can be used to fight against your destiny? Now, I'm not saying that they're, they're demo- de- demon-possessed and they know what they're doing, okay? I'm not saying that. But the enemy allows, and he gets in people's minds and start going, oh, Latasha, why don't you do this? And Carl, why don't you go here? And, and Mildred, why don't you do this? And wait, you need to do this. And it's th- nothing more than the enemy. That's why you better pray, stay prayed up. You better stay churched up. You better stay worded up. You better be in a Bible-preaching church more than just a, the church that you can go and get a feel-good message and leave there. You better get in some word inside of you. Because the Bible is clear that we are wrestling against do- demons and principalities and rulers of darkness. And I'm here to declare over somebody's life today, keep doing what is pleasing to God even in the midst of all these activities, even in the midst of all these plots and these schemes trying to work against you and undermine your destiny. I'm glad Latasha got that. Praise the Lord. If it's just for you, I'm glad you came today. But I'm here to tell you today, we got to begin to do this today. You have to come to a place where you say, I'm not going to let someone else make me venture away from who I am oh y'all miss what I I'm gonna take a drink of water let me take a drink of water I'm gonna say it again and y'all gonna clap there on that you got to get to the place that you say I am not gonna let somebody else make me venture away from who I am what do I mean by that they start talking dumb to you and all of a sudden I'll get them I'll get revenge on them. All of a sudden, you dropping uh, F-bombs and four little words like left and right, like it's going out of style, and that's not who you are. And you're sitting there, you're sitting there and you're letting somebody else get, in, get inside of your mind to dictate and make you venture away from what God has called you to be. Don't give nobody that kind of control over your life. Don't give anybody that kind of access to your life. That they can come in and say something and all of a sudden you're cussing people out, telling flipping off birds, following people, following people at the, the red light, following them to their house like you're going to do something. Don't let nobody get in your head that much. You letting somebody control you that, you, that has no access to your life. So what if your bro- boss said something stupid? Don't do something stupid like walk away and say, I'm quitting this job. And then you get in the car and go, I wish I wouldn't quit that job. I'm going to pay my bills. No, you better keep your attitude right and keep your mind right and keep your ideas right that you don't venture away from what you're supposed to be doing. It's the same thing in church. You better stay planted where you're at. Don't let the devil come in and be speaking to you and say, you need to go do this and you need to go. You better know it's from God. You better know that God's called you to do it because if not, you're getting out of the will of God and you'll be sitting there going, man, what did I do? Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Hallelujah. Dan, am I right? <laughs> praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The good thing is I hadn't even started preaching yet. I'm just teaching. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to preach. Y'all ain't going to be here till 3 o'clock. I'm just joking with you. Get you out of here right around 1.30. Um, I'm just kidding. But you have to understand I'm not going to let anybody get in my mind so much that I venture away from who I really am. Because in being a child of God and being a a, a servant of God and being one of God's children, we can tell you we have learned to love people that are unlovable. And if you haven't, you better learn how. You're going to have to learn to love people. Some of you sleeping by them every night, married to them, (laughs) trying to love people that are unlovable. (laughs) But being children of God and being child of God we got to learn to love people that even are unlovable I've learned to smile in the face of people that don't like me I've learned to bless people that talk bad about me I've learned to get up and say you know and wake up every morning and say you know what God I bless so and so God I bless them God use them even when they even when they they've done me wrong even when they've hurt me because I've got to you've got to learn that even in the face of challenges even the face of circumstances because you will you, you will never change me 
No matter your hate, no matter what you're doing, that's what you got to learn, that no matter what I'm dealing with today, no matter what I'm going through, no matter who's talking bad about me, no matter, I'm talking to y'all, I'm not talking to me, I'm talking to y'all. You got to learn that the boss is not treating you right. Oh, the, rela- the, the husband's not treating you good. The wife's not treating you good. The, the kids are acting silly. The, 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 the co-workers aren't doing you right. You got to learn to say, I bless them anyway. And I say, God, I, they're not going to change me. You will never know your, your remarks phase me. You will never know that your, 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 your evil looks get to me. You're never going to know that you hurt me. Do you understand? You're never going to know how you, how, how, what you did to me because I'm going to sit there and I'm going to smile in the face and I'm going to say, nope, I bless them anyway. 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 You want to learn how to love the unlovable? You want to learn how to deal with this? Get yourself a church real quick. You'll learn real quick. You, you will learn real quick because you, ha- you will learn that pe- none of y'all, I'm talking about people who aren't here today, but none of y'all, y'all are all unlovable. Y'all, I said oh, y'all are all unlovable. I meant y'all are all lovable. <laughs> y'all are all lovable. <laughs> y'all are all lovable. Anyone can do good when their environment is conducive for doing good. I'm going to say that again. I said anyone can do good when the environment is conducive for doing good. But what do you do? When you have to go to work and you have to deal with all kinds of spirits. What do you do when you got to walk in the house and your husband ain't saved and your wife ain't saved or whatever. And you have to walk in there and you have to deal with all kinds of spirits and they're coming against you. And you walk in there and there are people smiling at you at work. But you know they're talking about you behind your back. You know they're smiling at you to your face. But you know behind their back they're throwing daggers in you. Can you walk in and just say praise the Lord. Can you walk in and just say, God, I'm put a smile on my face because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. We don't sing that, but if you've been church for any amount of time, longer than like 20 years, you would know that song. (laughs) Do you walk in and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And you are not going to affect my life. I'm not going to let the eight, nine hours that I'm on this job ruin my entire 24 hours in my day. I'm not going to let somebody acting silly affect my life like that. I'm not going to let somebody that's calling me, telling me this, affect my relationship with my wife. Y'all know how much news I get every day? People ringing my, did you know this? Did you know that? I'm not going to let it affect my relationship at home. You got to stay focused. You got to say, this is a temporary situation in my life. And I'm going to keep on keeping on. Do y'all hear me today? The word that God wants me to speak over someone in this place today is don't let other things define who you are. Do you hear me today? Do not let other things define who you are. You let God define who you are. Do y'all hear me today? Don't let other things define who you are. You let God define who you are. Keep on doing good. Keep on loving. Keep on serving. Keep on giving. But pastor, you just don't understand the people I have to deal with are full of hell. The people I have to deal with have so much hell inside of them. Here's what you got to do. You got to love the hell out of them. (laughs) Y'all get that when y'all get in the car. Here's what you got to do. I'm dealing with a bunch of people. They're full of hell. You love the hell out of them. You, t- I, I, you, you begin to show them the love of Christ. You begin to look in their face and smile. And you begin to say, I love you. Why don't you come to church with me? Let me pray for you. Because let me tell you, and you know, church is not just for your friends. Some people, your enemies need church even more. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is saying today. He says, I know that there are those who call themselves Jews, but they aren't. There are deceivers among you. But if you will just keep on loving them. Let me tell you what I'll do. He says, in our scriptures, he says this. He says, God will expose deception around you. If you keep on doing good, if you keep on loving, listen, you don't got to defend yourself all the time. If I had to defend myself all the time, that's all I would do, okay? That would be my life. I don't got to defend myself. I know who I am. I know what God is speaking to me. I know the anointing that's on my life. And so I am going to show people love even when they're showing me hate. I'm going to show people love even when they're doing me wrong. I'm going to show people love even when they're, they're not treating me right. Because you have got to learn that God will expose the deception. 
You don't have to do it yourself. I didn't say he will allow you to become the Holy Ghost uh, FBI or something. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God will begin to say, okay, I'm going to, I'll make it clear to people. I'll let people find out the truth. I will expose deception around you. You don't have to be a spiritual detective. You don't have to be the Holy Ghost spy. All you have to do is keep doing good and keep doing what God has said to do. And he will expose fakeness and he will expose those who are fake around you. You, and he will expose those who are trying to fit in and make you think that they're there for you and they got your back, but really they're trying to do you harm. Nobody dealt with people like that. Wow. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God will expose them. You don't have to fight all your battles. We got a God on our, on our side that's undefeated. He's the undisputed champion of champions, and he will fight your battles for you. You don't have to go in and defend yourself. As a, that's not what I said. I didn't do this. That's not true. No, 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 no. You let God work on it because God will expose the fakeness. God will expose them for what they really are, and those who are trying to fit in and make you think that they're for you, God will say, no, I'm going to expose you for who you really are. Here is how I know for a fact. Say, tell me how you know for a fact, Pastor. Here's how I know for a fact that God has an eye on your situation. Because even those that are in the church at Smyrna, Smyrna who were trying to plot, they were unsti- still unsuccessful. Read it. Even those that were trying to plot and trying to scheme and trying to act like they were something they were not, they were still unsuccessful. God exposed them. They were still not able to do what they came in to do. There are some people here today that know there were some plots and plans and schemes of the enemy that did not prevail against your life. There are some people, I'm looking for them, there are some people in here that knows that the devil meant for evil, God turned it around for good. There are some people that know that the devil meant for a scheme and a plot and a plan to come in and affect your life. But the, the Lord did not allow it to prevail in your life. Does anybody hear me today? And I can tell you why. Because God has blocked it. God has blocked it. Do y'all hear me today? God has blocked it. There are some things that God never let you even know about that he blocked. Do you understand what I'm saying today? There are some things that were meant for your life that God never even allowed you to know about because he blocked it. This is stuff that was coming against you that God said, I'm not going to let them worry worry about that. I'm not going to let them worry about that situation. I am blocking it. There were situations that the devil was meant to destroy you, but God blessed it, blocked it. There were accidents that was meant for you, but God stopped it. There were situations and health problems that were meant for you, but God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to block that. And you don't even know about it because God stepped in and he said, no, I am the blocker. I'm going to block what the enemy is trying to do against you. If anybody believes they've had it, Thing blocked in their life. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord. Come on. Mm. How did he block it? How did he block it? I'm going to tell you how he blocked it. When my enemies and my foes came to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they still fell. Yeah. Psalms 27.2. When the enemy came and my foes came at me to eat up my flesh, to try to destroy me, they what? They stumbled and they fell. Do you understand what I'm saying today? I'm saying this simply. You got to step over it. Do you hear me? They stumbled and they fell. Deception was trying to come, but they stumbled. You got to begin to walk over those things. Today, I'm telling you, you got to step over what they said about you. You got to step over how they looked at you. You got to step over how they lied about you. Go and get what God has for your life. Step over it. He said when they came, they stumbled and they fell. You got to step over those lies. You got to step over those deceptions. And you got to go forward with what God has planned for your life you got to say step over it it. you got to step over it today God will expose it some of you even today it's blowing your mind because God is exposing the disingenuous insincere spirit around you Hmm. because God you're going through your life even now and God is exposing the disingenuous and the insincere spirit around you people that thought you thought were your people that's my that's my brother from another mother that's my ride or die that's my homie that's my right hand man i got them 
But God's exposing certain people in your life, even right now in your life. And, but then all of a sudden, God is exposing that and showing you who people really are. He's been to open up your eyes to see who people really are in your life. And begin to see what God is really wanting to do in your life. Because God is saying, I'm disconnecting you from certain people so I can connect you with other people. Do y'all hear me today? God is disconnecting you with certain people so that he can connect you with the right people. But don't start tripping when God starts exposing. Because God is going to help you to understand that the righteous will suffer. Go to verse 10, please. The, 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 God is going to help you to understand that even though you're going through things, even though you're dealing with things, the righteous will suffer. Verse 10 of our scripture today. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Now remember, we understand that this text in Revelation is dealing with the end times. It's dealing with the end times. But there is a revelation in here for us now. There is a revelation that God is showing us because God wants you to know that I'm about to work in your life. So there's a revelation that even though this is the revelation is meant, the book of Revelation was meant for the end times, God is exposing a revelation that he wants you to hear today. And I believe it's important because we have to know that there comes a time when we mature in Christ that we have to stop being so naive. Mm, Jesus. I'm going to say it again. We have to know that there becomes a time in our life when we are maturing to a place or we should be maturing to a place in our walk with God that we got to stop being so naive. What do I mean by that? Stop being so petty. Stop being so silly. Stop, stop saying, oh, no, that they did this to me and, and he did this and, and this one's mean and this one's rude and this one won't talk to me and this one's this and this. Listen, why, why, are you, why do you love God? Do you love it for people? Because people are always going to disappoint you. You got to love God because God is love. You got to love him and say, God, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how she treats me today, no matter how he acts to me today, I'm not going to let these petty things. You got to become over this naive thing. Let me just say this. The one thing, and I said it a few minutes ago, that will kill a church growth, and we are growing. God is doing something in this place. But one thing that will kill it, it very quickly is strife and deception and lies and all of these different things that come in and gossip. We can't allow that thing that Jezebel spirit to come in and try to take away what God wants to do because if he does then we're all going to miss out on our blessing not just me listen not just me not just am I going to be disappointed you're going to be disappointed because you are connected to something that has favor written all over it do you hear me today that has increase and promotion written all over it and I'm telling you today we can't allow that and we got to mature to a place in our lives that we understand this is not about man this is about the God this is about our God I'm not going to let them bother me I'm not going to let them mess with my worship i'm not gonna let them do this i mean do we really need to make an appointment to tell someone that we're going through something think about it now y'all know anybody knows me know i'm always here i'm i'm always available you can reach me anytime y'all all have my number go find another pastor that if everybody in his church has his number and text him all time of the night okay and i don't care but but i'm just saying go find somebody else good luck but I am always here. But do we really have to make appointments with people to tell them that we're going through something? Listen, everybody is going through something. Every one of us is dealing with something. Every one of us is going through times. Every one of us has things to deal with. Every one of us. Everybody in this whole place has a story about what they're dealing with. If you don't have a story what you're dealing with, just hold on. You'll get one. But every one of us have a story about what we're dealing with and about what we're going through. Everybody in this whole place, the one common denominator is if you are doing what God told you to do, is that you've attracted adversity in your life. We don't want to clap for that, but it's good. It's true. I don't like it, but it's good. The one common denominator in every one of our lives is that we, if we are doing what God wants us to do, we are attracting adversity in our life. We are attracting different things in our life. So don't be caught off guard. The Bible says, think it not strange that the fiery trail that has come to try you. The Bible says, count it all joy, not if, not if. It doesn't say count it all joy if. It says, count it all joy, but when you fall, when you fall. So the fiery tests are coming. The trials are coming, which means don't allow what the enemy does to you to stop you from what God is doing through you. 
My gosh. Oh, y'all didn't even hear me. Don't allow what the enemy is doing to you to stop you from what God is wanting to do through you. Think about what I just said. Don't allow what the enemy is trying to do to you, my gosh, to stop you from what God is trying to do through you. The devil is after what God is wanting to do through you. The devil is after what God is wanting to do through you. He is after that promise. Come on, if you have a promise, say amen. Amen. He's after that vision. If you have a vision, say amen. Amen. He's after that dream. If you have a dream, say amen. Amen. He's after that prophetic word. If you have had a prophetic word, say amen. amen. He's trying to kill it. Because he can't kill it, he wants to make you do it. He is not after this and after that. He is after not what what where you've been. He's after what you're going to do. He's not concerned about what you're doing. He is concerned about what you're about to do. He's concerned about the vision that has in you, the promises and the prophetic word and all of these different things, the dreams that God has given you. And so he knows that he can't kill it because he can't kill it. He wants you to kill it yourself. He wants you to destroy it yourself. But as you mature in Christ, you know this. You know this one thing. And I've got to get this tattooed all over my chest. One day I will. I got to lose about 10, 15 more pounds, but one day I will. No, I'm just kidding. Listen, I, he knows this one thing, and you've got to learn this one thing th- throughout your entire life. All things. I said all things. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And you got to begin to declare that over your life. That even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though all hell is breaking loose in my life, even though it's a messed up situation I'm dealing with, I know in my mind, I know in my heart, I know that the word of God has declared over my life that all things, not some things, not most things, not if I choose a thing, God said all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So if things aren't working out good, you got to look at your life and say, do I really love God? If things are never working out good and nothing ever is working out good in your life, you got to start questioning yourself. Now, I didn't say we're not going to have hard times and hardships and all this, but you got to look at your life. When nothing good ever happens and you're just always depressed and always discouraged and everything's bad and you're, you're Debbie Doubter and you're, 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 you're sad Stevie and all this, you got to look at your life and start saying, look at your own life and saying that, that well, nothing good is working in my life. Well, I'd question you and say, do you really love God? Because my Bible says all things work together. So it's not always going to be, it doesn't mean you're not going to go through stuff, but it shouldn't be that every trial after trial after trial after trial with nothing good happening. There should be trial, something good, something good, something good. Trial, 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 something good. And you got to start questioning yourself and looking at yourself and saying, do I really, am I really loving God the way I'm supposed to? So you begin to understand that no matter what happens in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that when it comes to God, has a, he has a miraculous way of taking the bad stuff and using it for your good. Man. God has a miraculous way of taking the bad stuff and using it for your good. Ten minutes and I'll be done. But God has an amazing way of taking those things that the devil meant for your evil and he'll begin to turn it around for your good. There are people in here today that will tell you when I was going through all hell breaking loose in my life, it didn't make any sense, but I wouldn't take nothing for my journey right now. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey right now. There's some of you that will look at your life and say, yes, I was going through, but I tell you, even though I went through all hell, everything, I lost everything, I went through everything, all this stuff happened to me. There's nothing I would do to change it because it brought me closer to God, because it brought me closer to a new beginning, because it brought me closer to what God had to store for my life. Man, I wouldn't be at church service on no Sunday morning if I didn't go through what I went through. How many of you can say that? I wouldn't be at no church service on Sunday morning. If I hadn't gone through what I had gone through, in fact, I would just now be rolling over out of bed from a long night of partying. But look at me now. I'm in here at church, and because I know I need a word from God, that God is the only one that can bring me up and bring me out and bring me over this. And the reason I praise him like I do is because of what I've been through, and I wouldn't take none of it back. How many of you can say that? The reason I praise God like I do. 
It's because of what I've been through. If I hadn't gone through what I've gone through, I wouldn't preach like I preach. I promise y'all. People say, you're loud, Pastor. You preach loud, man. You loud. I have a loud mouth, first of all. But also, I'm excited because of what God has brought me through. I've gone through hell. I've lost everything. And I begin to see God restore things back to my life. I've gone through things, situations that I thought was the end of the world for me. But God brought new blessings into my life. I've gone through situations that I thought was going to break me, but all it did was make me. Do you hear me today? I've gone through things, tests that God has turned into a testimony. I've gone through adversity that God has turned into my advertisement. Do you hear me today? I've gone through hell that God has brought me out and said, you know what? You know what? You're not always going to be like that, Ryan. You're not always going to be preaching to, to 100 people. God, I'm, God's going to bless you. See, there was a time when I was preaching to four people in my house. So when I look here, y'all look and y'all say, that's not a big church. But I tell you, there was a time when I was preaching to three and four people in my house. So when you see 75, 80 people coming, you know God's doing something. Do you hear me? And you can't despise small beginnings. You got to start somewhere, right? You got to go somewhere. And so, so you have to begin to say and you got to begin to declare over your life. And the reason I praise him like I praise him is because of what I've been through. Lord, I thank you for everyone who lied on me. Lord, I thank you for everyone who turned their back on me. Lord, I thank you for every fake friend that I ever had. Lord, I thank you for the time I was broke. Lord, I thank you for the people that left me because of all of it has worked together for my good. Do you hear me today? And that's what you got to begin to say. And I, you, oh, pastor, I can't say that. Then you'll never walk out of what you're in. Until you can begin to praise God and say, God, I thank you for what I went through. I thank you that I lost and I, and but God, because I can praise you for the gain. Yes. See, when, until you lose something, you'll never know what it is like to gain something. Until you've been through something, you'll never know what it's like to do something. Until you've experienced something, you'll never know what it's like to have things working better in your life. Do you hear me today? But I can look back over the trials and tribulations of my life, and I can say, God, I thank you that I can pay my electricity bill. I thank you that my rent is paid on time. I thank you that my car payment's getting paid. Oh, God, yeah, I don't have as much as I used to have. But there was a time I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know where it was going to come from. God, I thank you that now at least it may be a struggle, but I thank you that it's getting done. Does anybody hear me today? And until you can praise God in that, until you can lift your voice and say, God, I thank you for those that hurt me. I thank you for those that left me. I thank you that you're never going to experience new things in your life. Because the reason God did all that is not because he can look back and say, I'm such a mean God. I'm such an evil God. It's because he got something better on the other side of that. If God took relationships away from you, it's not because he's mean and hateful. It's because he has something better for you on the other side. Do y'all hear me today? I'm preaching better than y'all. Amen. It's all amen myself. Amen, Pastor Ryan. Do you hear me today? Your prayer life has gotten better. Your praise has gone deeper. You know who your friends really are now. All because of what you went through. That it seemed like was the end of the world. But God has brought you out on the other side of that thing. Do y'all hear me today? Amen. So the devil is after that one thing, that vision, that promise, that dream, that prophetic word. And when the attacks come, you have to pull yourself together and stop tripping. Tell your neighbor, say, stop tripping. <laughs> when you, <laughs> some of you look funny saying that. <laughs> Not me, because I got a little brother in me, so, I, you know, <laughs> I look normal to me. <laughs> Stop tripping. Amen. He said amen. <laughs> stop tripping, though. You got to stop tripping when things start happening in your life and when attacks are coming. Attacks will come. Listen, if you let every attack you're under trip you out and make you lose your mind and make you go crazy, just forget it, man. I don't even know what to say to that. You in trouble. <laughs> you in a lot of trouble. You gotta stop tripping over little stuff and even big stuff because God's working it out. God's working it out. Listen, can I let me tell you how God works? Ten minutes and I'll be done. I'm just <laughs> let me tell you how God works. Last night I was sitting there and dealing with some stuff, and me and I were talking, and all of a sudden, I'm I, honest to God, this is the truth. Honest to God. Talking about things that were going on. Not three minutes later, not three minutes as me and I were talking about, I get a text from Carla. 
I mean, and Takara don't text like this because she always works. She works, they, you know, they do hair to like, to like, she does hair to like 3 a.m. too. Am I right? 2 o'clock. She don't, she don't text like this. I start getting ding, 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 like six, six things at like midnight, like six, six, uh, uh, six texts. And it was a prophetic word that she didn't even know what I was dealing with. She didn't even know what I was going through. She didn't know what me and I were just talking about. And what she spoke to me was exactly what I needed to hear because let me be honest, I was starting to trip a little bit. I was, starting to, I was starting to get a little upset. I was starting to get a little frustrated about some things. But all of a sudden, God knows exactly what he's doing. you got to just let, trust him and let him be God and let him do what he's going to do. Do you hear me? Listen, if you try, this ain't even in my message. Just throw an extra dollar in the plate in a second, okay? This is free for y'all. Listen, listen, I don't even know what I was going to say. Back to my message. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> Stop tripping. Yeah. <laughs> Stop tripping. <laughs> I totally forgot. Back to my message. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, stop. St- don't, God knows what he's doing. Oh, I know what it is. E- a lot of times you hold on to stuff too long. If you hold on to stuff too long, y- you're going to miss out on blessings that are coming your way. Because you're holding so tight to these different things. You're holding to, I'll tell you when to start. No, you, you, you're holding so tight to these things that God wants to do and these things that, I mean, these things that God wants to remove from your life that God can't bring these new things in your life you got to release it and let go so God can begin to move in your life. The devil, the devil is after that thing that God is wanting to do through you. He's after that promise. But as you mature, you got to learn that all things work together. So the devil's after that thing. He's after that promise. The Bible says this is a test. This is a test. The Bible says this is a test you're going through. And he says in our scripture day, some of you will be put into prison. So let's make this plain. I don't think any of y'all are going to pray. I pray none of y'all are going to prison. But he says, some of y'all will be put into prison. But let me make this plain for you. Some of us will be put in tight situations. Some of us will be put in confined areas. Some of you will be put in controlling situations. Some of you even right now can relate to this on your work. Because on your job, they're trying to control you. On your job, they're trying to limit how far you can go and the level you can go up to and what you can accomplish in your life. There are some people who don't want you to get to a certain level because it's control. Do you hear me today? They don't want you to go to another level because it's control. And it's really been bothering you, but you didn't realize that God sent you here in this place today for this word to tell you that he is saying, I know where you are. And when my hand is on your life, you cannot be confined. You cannot be controlled. You can't stop what God wants to do in your life. He says, remember this. This is nothing but a test. Somebody say, this is a test I'm going through. This is a test I'm going through. Say it. Say, this is a test I'm going through. God says, I need you to understand. I need you to get to a place where you say that my dream is bigger than my discouragement. My assignment is bigger than my attack. My vision is bigger than their vindictiveness. My promise is greater than their pain. My joy is larger than their jealousy. Do y'all hear me today? You got to get to a place in your life that you say that my dream is bigger than the discouragement that you're trying to bring upon me. My assignment is bigger than the attacks that are coming against me. My vision is bigger than the vindictiveness of one person. My promise is greater than this pain. My joy is larger than this jealousy. Some of you dealing with that at work right now. You just nothing but jealous. It's nothing but hatred. You got to stand up in the face of that and say, you will not stop my promotion. You will not stop this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is why you have to just keep on smiling. You got to keep your head up. You got to keep your head up and you got to keep praising God. I may be the, I, they need to have a funniest pastor award. I may win it. <laughs> you got to keep your head up though, seriously. You got to keep your head up. You got to keep praising God. I may be crushed, but I am not destroyed. I may be persecuted, but I've never been abandoned. Why? Because whatever happens will not last forever. It's just a test. This too shall pass. This is just a temporary condition. The Bible says in our text today that you're going to be tested and you're going to be thrown into prison and it will last for 10 days. The revelation that God gave me this week and how many want to hear the revelation, the prophetic word that God gave me? (laughs) Say, take your time, Pastor. Okay, okay, y'all told me to. (laughs) The revelation, seriously, that God gave me this week is simply this. It's simply this. Whatever God allows his people to go through, Trouble always has a term limit. Yeah. 
Mm. Whatever God allows you to go through, whatever you've been experiencing, there's always an expiration date on the end of trouble. Trouble don't last always. Do y'all hear me? Trouble don't last always. You're going to come out of this. Trouble is only temporary. It looks like Job was going to go through hell. He went through it forever, it seems like. You go through 41 ch uh, chapters of hell from Job. Go read it for Job. You go through basically 41 chapters of hell for Job. But then in the 42nd chapter of Job, you find out and you see that God gives Job double for his trouble. You just got to hold on. You just got to wait for God to move. Don't get ahead of the plan of God. Let God move. Let God be God. He knows what he's doing, people. He knows he created everything you see. He knows what he's doing. And there are people that are looking at you saying, my goodness, when are you ever going to come out of that? They're feeling sorry for you. They're walking around moping for you. Oh, I feel so sorry for Michelle. Don't feel sorry for me. I don't need y'all sympathy. I need y'all's prayers. But I don't need your sympathy. Don't feel sorry for yourself and don't walk around and get people thinking, oh, I got to feel sorry for so-and-so. When, when are you, and you know, they're sitting there saying, I feel so sorry for them. When are you ever going to get married? When are you ever going to come out of this? When are you ever going to get promoted? Are you ever going to be healthy? Are you ever going to get a good job? Are you ever going to have kids? Is your ministry ever going to grow, Pastor Ryan? Is it ever going to happen? Is it ever? Is it ever? But they don't realize that this has just been a test and that this thing is just temporary and this trouble you're going through has an expiration date on it. And I have a prophetic word for this church today for someone sitting in here right now. And this isn't for everybody, but I'm telling you, God told me to tell somebody this. It's almost over. Do you hear me today? It's almost over the thing you prayed about it's almost over that thing you've been frustrated with it's almost over that thing you've been not been able to shake it's almost over that problem you've been having in your body it's almost over that unemployment it's almost over the financial drought is almost over the drama is almost over the situation is almost over the children problem is almost over the relationship problems are almost over I'm here to tell somebody and to prophetically speak over somebody's life that God says it's almost over. His anger endures but a moment. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I prophesy in this place today. God brought you here today because he wanted me to tell you that it's almost over. Tell your neighbor, say it's almost over. It's almost over. Can you help me understand, Pastor Ron? And the message is almost over. <laughs> Ten more minutes and I'll be done. I'm just kidding. I'm really, I'm seriously almost over. But some people in here today are saying, can you help me understand, Pastor Ron? See, I know that when you speak a prophetic, I, I got to tell you all something. The prof prophetic anointing has, has increased on my life tremendously. I mean, and, and, and I've always, God's always used me. I've been pretty accurate, but I'm telling you, it's gone up to another level because you got to guard your anointing. Do you hear me? You got to guard it. <laughs> and so I've been guarding my anointing. I've been, I've been letting God use me even more and stepping out even more. And I know that when you release a prophetic word like it's almost over, you always have skeptics and someone might say I, I i don't understand what he really means by that i don't understand what he's really speaking by that he must not understand my situation he must not understand what i'm dealing with he must not understand my relationship he must not understand my job yeah god can do it for everybody but you right because <laughs> i mean you're the only person I've been going through this for a long time, Pastor Ryan, and now you got up here and you're telling people it's almost over, and you say this is a prophetic word from the Lord and that God gave you this word, and you're saying it's almost over. Can you help me to understand what almost is, Pastor? Well, all I can say is this, and I hope this helps someone in here that will receive this word. God is speaking and saying in this place today, for those that will have ears to hear and those that will receive this and those that will believe this and those that will begin to walk this out, that God said almost is 10 days. Amen. Oh, y y y okay. I receive it, Lord, for me. Praise the Lord. 
God is saying and he's speaking in this place right now under the prophetic anointing and the prophetic utterance and the prophetic stirring that's in my life right now. God is saying right now almost is 10 days. And within 10 days, that thing is going to turn around. Within 10 days, that thing is going to change. Within 10 days, I prophesy right now over your family. Right now, within 10 days, I prophesy over your health. Within 10 days, I prophesy over your job, over your career. Within 10 days, over your schooling, over your, your church, I speak it in the name of Jesus. God says, give me 10 days. If you will praise me for 10 days. Some of you better need to go into fast for the next 10 days. Some of you need to say, I'm just going to drink water and, and eat crackers for the next 10 days. I'm telling you, if you receive what I'm speaking right now, I'm telling you when I've heard from God, I fear God way too much to get up here and try to make y'all excited. It fear, I'm telling you what God has told me. He said within 10 days, within 10 days, God says, I speak it in the name of Jesus. God says, give me 10 days. Call me crazy if y'all want to. Call me that I've lost it if y'all want to. Say, oh, Pastor Ryan just really blew it this time. But I'll be sitting up on the midnight hour of the 10th day believing that God is about to turn this thing around in my life. I'll be sitting up praising God saying this thing is about to turn out. Laugh at me now, but we will see who's laughing in 10 days. I said you can laugh at me now, but we will see who is laughing in 10 days. God is about to do miracles. He brought you here to Today, for a reason, I speak it out right now. Y'all better lift your hands and receive this all over this place. I speak it out right now. I speak it out. Tuition is being paid in 10 days. Business deals are taking place in 10 days. Good health report is coming within 10 days. New relationships are starting within 10 days. New ideas are coming within 10 days. New connections within 10 days. Open doors within 10 days. Favor within 10 days. Families restored within 10 days. Phone calls you never expected within 10 days. Phone calls you've been expecting within 10 days. Promotion within 10 days. Bonuses within 10 days. Raises within 10 days. New jobs within 10 days. Increase within 10 days. Come on, just speak it out of your mouth. Say 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days. Come on, stir it up. Okay, Jezra. 10 days. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Tell him. Say, God, I'm believing for this within 10 days. I'm believing for this within 10 days. Within 10 days. Within 10 days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, the word God is speaking in here today. And he's saying, whatever you're going through today, you just have to survive this. You're so close. You can't let this break you now. You can't let this stop you now. You can't get discouraged now. You've come too far. So you've got to survive this. You're a survivor. You can survive this. You've survived bigger things than what you're going through right now. Think about what you've come through in your life already. If God brought you through that, do you not think he can bring you through whatever you're facing right now? The Bible in our text today in verse 10 said, if you are faithful unto death. See, everything that the enemy throws at you and throws at us is trying to cause us to be unfaithful. Everything the enemy throws, stand to your feet if you can, I'm done. Everything the enemy throws at you everything the enemy throws at us the the key thing he's trying to do is to make you to become unfaithful because the bible says if you're faithful unto death that means faithful throughout life if you'll be faithful watch and see what i'm going to do in your life see everything that the enemy throws at you is trying to cause you to be unfaithful and and to be up and be down and be up and be down and be in church and be out of church and be in church and be out of church and be done and give and don't give and do and don't do but God is saying today I'm not blessing people like that anymore I'm not blessing people like that we're we're, we're in a serious times I'm not gonna bless people who can't be faithful if you can't be faithful to me I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna open up the windows of heaven and bless you You've got to be faithful. There's blessings that come with faithfulness. He's saying, I need you to be faithful even when circumstances don't look like they're going to turn out in your favor. I need you to show up even when you don't feel like showing up. Some of you have been so faithful, and even today it took so much for you just to get here and get here on time, as many of you did. Praise Jesus. But you said, if I can just get there, if I can just get to the house of the Lord, 
people look at you and say, why do you even keep on going to church? Why do you even keep on tithing? Why do you even keep on giving? It's because you understand that if I'm faithful in a few things, that God will make me ruler over many. We are here in this place, and I speak a prophetic prayer over your life. Lift your hands all over this building. We are here declaring today that we aren't going to get weary in well-doing. God, we declare in 10 days our due season. Within 10 days, our due season is arriving. Some of you in here are about due. You've got so much seed in the ground. You're like, Lord, come on now. I'm due. But God sent this word today to tell you that he knows your faithfulness. And he's about to reward it. That he's seen your faithfulness. And he's about to reward it. I speak it over your life today. Your season of being empty. Your season of being frustrated. Your season of being discouraged is almost over. You just got to keep on. Maybe it's one more day. Maybe it's one more hour. Maybe it's one more shout. Maybe it's one more praise. Maybe it's one more, one more week. But what if you knew that it was almost over? And then you got to get and say, God, why'd that never come? Why'd that never happen when you get to heaven? If you just praise me one more week. If you just stayed faithful to me for one more month. If you could have just prayed to me one more day. God, we come into agreement that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. God, we say every plot and every scheme, everything that the enemy has tried to throw at us, frustration, discouragement, disbelief, we cancel it now. We cancel it now. Discouragement, disbelief, frustration, we cancel it. And we hold on. And believe that what you said, it will come to pass. Because you are not a man that should lie. What you said you would do, the dreams you said you would give, the visions you said you would go, the prophetic words that you've given, the promises that you've spoken over our life. So God, in this place right now, I thank you that the worst is over. I thank you that the hardest days are over. I thank you that the biggest problems are over. And that the best is yet to come in our lives. If you receive this, I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand of praise right now. Come on. I said if you receive this, I want you to give God a hand of praise right now. You tell him, you say, God, I know it's almost over. I know it's almost over, God. I know it's almost over, God. I know it's almost over, God. I know my vision is right on hand. I know my blessing is coming. I know my breakthrough is coming. I know my church is about to explode, God. I'll not back down from the word of God. I'll not see, quit, quit preaching with passion and with faith, faith, fire, uh, the presence of God and the anointing. I won't just get put in a box and say what people want to hear because I know that, God, blessings are on the other side of this thing. I know, God, that it's almost over. I know that favor and mercy and grace are following my life. God, we declare in this place, it's almost over, God. Relationships are being restored. Ten days, God. We give you ten days. We'll give you ten days, God. We know if we can just trust you. I hear the Lord saying right now, if you trust me for ten days, if you give me ten days, if you'll give me, and I'm going to say something even a little bit more direct. I just heard the Lord say this. I've never said this. I heard the Lord say, shut out every other sound other than what is of me. Turn off radio stations that aren't, right, aren't with me. I'm not saying you're going to hell because you listen to this music. I'm saying, but God, I hear him speaking. I hear him say, for the next 10 days, I'll, I'll focus everything on me. Focus everything on me. Ten days. Give me ten days. Give me ten days. Give me ten days. I hear the Lord speaking. How many of you, I truly hear this in my spirit. I think we, I think, uh, we need to fast for ten days. This church needs to fast for ten days. 
So I'm calling for a, a church-wide fast for the next 10 days. Break, uh, uh, sacrifice one meal. That's where we'll start, okay? I'm not going to make y'all go all in right now. We're going to do that one day. I'll we'll see how long y'all can make it. One meal. I'm asking y'all for the next 10 days, sacrifice one meal. Whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Sacrifice that. Sacrifice that meal and pray. And I'm telling y'all within 10 days, watch and see what God's going to do. How many of you believe the word of God today? Every head bowed and every eye closed. God, we come to you today. And if you're here today, I want to ask you the most important question. I don't know everybody here. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you're going through. But I never want to close a service without giving, giving people a chance to get things right with God. Without giving people a chance to, 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 to know that, that <laughs> I know where I'm going. Some of you today, maybe you, you, you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. Maybe you have, but you've fallen away, and you know you're not living for him now, and you know that now, it, 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 before anything else, you've got to give it, surrender to God. You, 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 you thank you for your word, Pastor Ron. Thank you that I declare it's almost over, but I've I got to get right with God today. If you're here today and you say, I've, I've never accepted Jesus or I've fallen away, I'm going to give you on the count of, t- on the count of t- I was going to count of 10. I'm going to count of three is what I meant. I'm going to count of three. I'm going to let you raise your hand. There's nothing to be embarrassed of. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your entire life. And if you can't do it in an atmosphere like this, I don't know when you can do it. Because we've all made this step. So on the count of three, I'm going to ask you. If you've n- you're not right with Jesus, you've fallen away, or maybe you've never accepted him, I want to give you a chance to get right with Jesus today. On the count of three. One, two, three. Anyone here? Let me see your hands. Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? I'm looking around. Anybody here? Anybody here? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say this when we say, Father God, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. And on the third day, he rose again. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Make me a new creation. Lord, I need you. I give you control of my life, of my mind, of my heart. Jesus, I can declare this day. February 27th, I am saved. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on. The last thing I want to ask you today, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Ryan, this message ministered to me. I needed to hear this, and I am declaring I'm standing on 10 days. I'm declaring it. I'm standing on it, and I'm believing that. And something you said just stuck in my spirit, and I, 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 just, I just want you to pray over me. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, th- this message ministered to me. I needed to hear that. Can I see your hands all over this room? Anybody here? Okay, everybody here. Praise Jesus. Will you stand up, and will you lock arms with somebody in this room as we do? We do this because when we hold hands... There's still that separation. But when we lock arms together, there's nothing that is stopping us from one another. Everybody lock hands with somebody. Everybody lock arms with somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I pray for you, you begin to pray for them. Let's go across the aisles, people. Go across the aisles. Go across. We're we family. We love each other. Go across the aisles. Praise the Lord. As I pray for you, I want you to begin to pray for them. You say, I don't know them. How am I going to pray for them? I promise you there's nobody in this room that's going to deny a prayer of blessing and favor and increase and promotion on their life. So just pray that. Pray God's will be done. God, I come to you today, and God, I've given you everything that I have. I've preached this message to the best of my ability, God. And God, today I ask that it will not just fall on deaf ears, but God, it will fall on the ears of those will take this and impart this into their lives and begin to declare it over their lives that God we declare in this place today that within 10 days I'm going to be hearing uh, 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 testimonies of promotion testimony of new job testimony of new relationship testimony of new, new, new open doors and divine connections God we declare it over our lives today we speak it out Father God you told us to be faithful in the little and you will be give us much God I am declaring even over my life I have been faithful in the little God I preach to five people I've preached to two people I've preached to hundreds of people and God I've done it all with the same passion all with the same fire everything God and I declare over my personal life that God this is my season and this over these next 10 days I'm going to begin to experience increase and favor like never before I speak over my people's lives today that we are walking into the best days of our life God even as we fast over this next 10 days God we declare that you are opening up doors that miracles are happening that favor is coming and we declare it and we speak it out 
in Jesus' name. Now, right now, I want you to give God a praise that makes the people at the bar drinking hear God, that God is doing something. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Hey, Mia. Hallelujah. You better receive that. You know, it's out of the out of our mouth, so you need to say, I receive that. <laughs> yes. What time is it? Um, you know, this week I was dealing with insurance companies and I had I had to get a phone fix and I had to um I had a piece of jewelry. I was talking to an insurance company trying to see if you know they could do this and they it's just so hard. You know, if you ever talk to an insurance company, I mean it's just like what's the point? You know, the deductible, it doesn't even make any sense. And finally I was get I felt myself getting so consumed. I was talking to Sprint and I was like, Well, you can't help me. Well, you're my insurance. I pay insurance. What am I supposed to do you know and I started my mind started thinking okay well Sprint is 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 who my security is and I had to step back for a second sometimes we all need to step back for a second and look and I thought you know what no my security is in Jesus Christ my security is not an insurance company that's going to I'm going to snap my fingers and say State Farm State Farm and they're going to here you go that person there you go no but sometimes we think like that. We start thinking that, oh, if they're not going to do it for me, what, what? I guess I just will stay my whole life with a cracked phone and it doesn't work. So, And I had to step back and I was in the car and the kids were there and I just started praying. I said, God, you are my security, Lord. I'm going to go get this thing fixed. I'm not going to send it off for a week. I'm not going to do this, do this. And when I did that, I took it in there and, I, and you know, it was like an hour to get it fixed. And when I went home, I'm not kidding you, I went home and I went to the mailbox and believe me, nobody ever sends me a check. I don't ever get a check. If this isn't God, I opened the mailbox and there was a check with my name in it for the exact amount that it cost to do my phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so let me tell you something. It starts here, it goes here, and it's believing. So we have to believe that. I don't know what you're going through today, but your security is not in the job, the man, the, the woman, the parents, the I don't know what. It's not in that. Your security is in Jesus, and he doesn't change. He doesn't go out of business. And let me tell you something. When you say, Jesus, Jesus, he's here. So, so as we give today, you know, that's where your security is. We're, we're giving to God and knowing that he's there for us. So if you need an offering envelope, um, you can ask one of the ushers, and we'll pray over it. And Amen. Hallelujah. If you need an offering, raise your hand. And as we get it to you, you can pay via PayPal. You can pay uh, www.gcclasvegas.com. Check whatever you want. Credit card. Um, I encourage you guys too. you know, right now God's blessing many of you with, with our tax return, our tax refund. You know, everything that comes into our life, 10% of that is God's. Amen. And I'm telling you, I have seen miracle after miracle after miracle from people that have given what God has blessed them with, and they have seen double God blessing them. So remember that whatever is yours. I told you all last week or two weeks ago, I said, if I find $10 on the floor, I, I, I'm putting five of that in, in the offering because it's God blessing me. Now, I know that $10, 10% is not I'm not dumb, people, okay? <laughs> okay? But I, I want to bless God, and I encourage you guys, whatever God brings into your life, Make sure that you're sending it back out to him because it's all because of him anyway. Amen. All right. When you have your tithe and your offering ready, stand to your feet. Let's pray over it and then we'll be dismissed today. Sorry we went a little bit long, but God's still good and we had church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Say this with me. Say, Father God, I give you my whole tithe or my offering today. Lord, I thank you that as I give, it shall be given back to me pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, I declare that even as I give today, this is opening up the way for 10 days, for 10 days a favor on my life. I'm declaring increase, promotion, new jobs, benefits, situations turning around, even as I give. In Jesus' name, amen. March it on up. Go back to your seat and we'll be dismissed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
He's intentional. Oh, wow. Okay, yes, yes. Yes, that's good. That's awesome. Hey, guess what? I just Amber just showed me. Guess what 10 days from today is? Drench service. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Drench service. Y'all, if y'all miss drench service, don't come to me going, 10 days didn't happen for me. I don't want to hear it, okay? I'm telling you, God's going to do something. Don't miss it. I love you guys. Get the CD. I'll see you guys Sunday. Uh, um, uh, no, I'll see men Friday. Bowling. Saturday, women's event. I'll be texting you all about it. Saturday is also uh, practice for the dance. I love you guys. Get the CD. God bless you. I'll see you later. You are dismissed. Amen. Go with us in peace and bring us back to the point of time. Amen. Mia. Here you go, honey. So remember, T-shirts are back there. And if you're going to retreat, please see um, Miss Christine or Desiree. Thank you. Serena. Serena. I'll pray for them if they want prayer. I need to see Shane, TJ, Rick, and Clemente. Shane, TJ, Rick, and Clemente. Anybody seen Rick or TJ? I mean, not TJ. I meant Clemente.